So, uh, ticks take blood meals from multiple hosts during their life cycle and may act as reservoirs of disease. Um, they secrete salivary fluid on attachment, which is uh, proteolytic. It uh, basically lyses a local vacuole in the, in the skin where they bite and they secrete this salivary fluid and it is immunosuppressive. So they get less bother from the immune system of the host. Um, and during this process, tick-borne pathogens may be transmitted in salivary fl fluid. So there are main, two main tick families of veterinary medical significance. The first is the argacids or soft ticks. And you can see a picture of an argacid in, in the bottom left hand side. Um, these are mainly um, transmit diseases of medical significance with one or two that affect livestock. But the main, the main group are the exoded or hard ticks and perhaps the most significant in the transmission of disease to livestock. Um, there are three genera of these of ticks in UK, exodes, haemophysalis and dermacenta. And the top left pick, you can see a questing nymph of Exodes ricinus, um, which is waiting for a host to come along. Uh, most of these ticks um, described from UK are parasites of small mammals and birds. So the major tick vectors of livestock disease in the UK are Exodes ricinus, the common deer, sheep, cattle, castor bean or pasture tick, depending on what you want to call it. And uh, one for the south, Haemophysalis punctata, the red sheep tick. So uh, Exodes ricinus has a three year life cycle with three blood feeding stages, the larva, the nymph and the adult. And uh, during this three year life cycle, it spends approximately 20 days on its host. So most of the time it spends in the vegetation and it requires a high humidity microclimate off its host, somewhere around about 90%. And so its habitats in would include woodland, moorland, and permanent scrubby grassland habitat, um, which would include headlands and hedges of fields. And the main uh, disease of livestock this animal, this tick transmits, uh, it would include Babesia divergens, which causes red water fever, Anaplasma phagocytophyllum, causing tick-borne fever. It transmits the Lauping ill virus and uh, will exacerbate um, diseases such as tick pyemia and pastoral pastoralosis, which are adventitious and not necessarily transmitted by the tick. So Haemophysalis punctata or the red sheep tick is, uh, has a coastal and downland habitat in the UK and it's a, a tick of the grasslands which Jolien I no doubt will expand on later. Uh, it seems to have an increasing geographical range in the southeast and there are historic reports from sites in coastal Wales but these haven't been checked for a while so we're really not sure. It does transmit uh, and a number of organisms, uh, Babesia major in cattle, Babesia matasi in sheep, uh, Tyleria, Tyleria orientalis in cattle, these are relatives of Babesia, and Tylea luanshunai in sheep. Um, these are described as having low pathogenicity in, in, in um, livestock. So the geographical range, the abundance, the period activity of both tick species seem to be changing with, with climate change, with changing land use, with rewilding and increasing population of deer in the case of Exodes ricinus. Now this, this slide just depicts uh, where livestock is raised in UK, mostly on the western side of the country, um, with Arab, more arable land on the eastern side. And Overlaid on that on the right hand side is a, a PHE map uh, of the, occur the uh, finding of Exodes ricinus and you can see that these overlap to quite some degree. So the first one is red water fever that I want to discuss caused by Babesia divergens and it's an intra erythrocytic protozoan and it's uh, in the apicomplexa group related to 
um, a protozoa like coccidia and malaria and it's transmitted by Exodes ricinus and in the slide on the left which is a, uh, a stained blood smear um, you can see these purple staining dots um, within the pink red blood cells and the single forms are growing stages or trophozoites and the double stages that you can see pear-shaped bodies are known as merozoites and these merozoites break out of the red blood cells and invade two new red cells. Now the infection is picked up only by female ticks feeding on infected cattle and from there on the parasite enters the tick um, sexual reproduction takes place and there is transovarial transmission through to the egg and then to the larva of the next generation. Um, from there on there is transstadial transmission through to the nymph, through to the adult, but infection may be maintained by tick progeny into a second generation. That may mean that these ticks are infective for up to four to six years. So infection is via sporozoites in the salivary fluid of the feeding tick. So signs would include fever above up to, I mean up to 40 maybe above 40 degrees C, there may be pipe stem diarrhea typically followed by constipation, you may notice a hammer pulse in the jugular vein, there may be respiratory distress, and hemoglobinuria, urea, port wine red, colored red urine and anemia. Uh, there may be abortion but perhaps less so and then maybe death also. Um, on the, the picture on the left hand side you can see a blood smear where um, typically red cells do not have any inclusion bodies and you can see speckled red cells, you can see red cells of different sizes. And these are all juvenile cells that have been thrown out into the, um, into the blood system to make up numbers. And they're pretty inefficient at uh, carrying oxygen. <clears throat> so following recovery, um, there, may, there will be low levels of infection maintained in the house without signs of disease for a number of years without uh, treatment. And this is known as the carrier state. However, um, calves below nine months of age um, become infected but are resistant to clinical disease and colostral antibodies from the carrier dams also protect. So with continue, continued tick challenge, uh, there may be an endemic stability, there may be a low level of disease and um, until one introduces uh, replacement stock. The next one is tick-borne fever um, caused by bacterium anaplasma phagocytophyllum um, and in the smear on the left um, you can see the pink staining blood cells as before and this neutrophil cell of the immune system and within the cytoplasm of that neutrophil you can see this pow powder blue staining body is a mass of uh, anaplasma bacterium and these break out and infect new cells. Now this uh, organism is transstadially transmitted from larva to nymph to adult and there doesn't appear to be any trans transovarial transmission and symptoms may include a high fever um, and a severe loss in milk production in, in cattle which may last for weeks. There may be ill thrift, there may be abortion storms in naive animals, and naive rams may become infertile for up to a month uh, and the, parasite, uh, the bacterium infects neutrophils and later eosinophils and later monocytes. So these are all cells of the immune system. So it is immunosuppressive and it may lead to these diseases, tick pyemia, for instance, pastorellosis, septicemic mysteriosis, and may exacerbate lauping ill in sheep. Um, uh, Paul, it's a one minute warning. Thanks, Paul. Okay. So there are multiple genetic strains, and these infect animals and man worldwide. So lauping ill, a flavivirus, 
and related to tick-borne encephalitis in humans and similar viral disease in sheep and goats in Europe, transmitted by Exodius ricinus ticks. Outbreaks seem to occur mainly in Scotland uh, and in Wales, north and southwest England, and it causes an acute encephalomyelitis in sheep. And the signs may be fever, tremors, ataxia, the typical louping gait of sheep, posterior paralysis and death. At this time, vaccine is not available, but I believe there is a project at Mordun uh, to create a new one. And other domestic animals, wildlife and humans may also be affected. This disease causes high mortality in naive sheep, uh, sheep and grouse chicks. Up to 70 or 80 percent of grouse chicks may die in a season due to this virus. The last one I want to mention, um, Haemophysalis punctata, which is increasing within the south and southeast. It's an open grassland tick and a collaboration between APHA and PHE uh, report the expanding range of this this tick. And there have been recent reports of massive infestations within the South Downs National Park. It's a vector of ovine, bovine babesia, tylaria species, it's this, which are historically considered non pathogenic. However, in 2005, uh, uh, we uh, reported uh, an incident in uh, lambs grazing the North Kent marshes and they were heavily infested with this tick and more than 25 years died and we diagnosed Tyleria luenshunai, which is normally non-pathogenic. So these ticks must have an immunosuppression suppressing effect in themselves. This year we reported the first uh, case in UK of tick pyemia in lambs and numbers of lambs died again with heavy infestations of this tick. Um, so Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.